Hello and welcome to this update. I am Josh Peck. We have some more Eclipse news and some things to set the record straight about. Um, with things like this upcoming uh, Eclipse, there's always a bunch of claims on the internet, but we all know that we can't believe everything we read online. So what's the truth? That's what we're going to talk about today. First, uh, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell to turn on all notifications so you'll be notified when a new video premieres. And also, if you want more content like this that's not available anywhere else, can't put it on uh, YouTube because it gets censored, head on over to dailyrenegade.com. That is the first place that I post a video before I ever put it on YouTube. You get early access and you get full videos. Uh, and there's even a community tab, which works a lot like Facebook. So all members of Daily Renegade can communicate with each other and fellowship. And it's just, it's a great place uh, for us all to um, just talk with each other, fellowship together, and not have to worry about being censored. Uh, you get full interviews, whereas usually when I do interviews or sharpening report episodes, I only put the first half on YouTube and I put the whole thing on Daily Renegade, and you get early access to all videos that I do. Okay, so with that being said, let's get right into it. Um, I want to talk about APEP slash Apophis. So yesterday, I talked about how NASA is shooting three rockets into the moon's shadow during the April 8th eclipse to take observations of how the sudden drop in sunlight affects the ionosphere. What I forgot to mention, though, is that the mission name for this is uh, APEP, which stands for Atmospheric per uh, Perturbation Around Eclipse Path. Now, what's strange about this is Apep is an ancient Egyptian deity who embodied darkness and disorder. And you know what this entity was also called? Apophis. Now, if you have followed the work of the late Dr. Thomas Horn the past few years, then that name should sound very familiar. Apophis was dubbed the Lord of Chaos and was seen as a giant snake or serpent. Uh, Apophis was also known as the Evil Dragon. Now, before he passed away, uh, Tom Horde had an amazing vision in which he saw what looked like a giant serpent heading towards the Earth. As it got closer, he saw that it was, in fact, a giant asteroid. Then he saw himself on Earth as this giant asteroid struck the Earth. And just as he saw he wasn't going to be able to escape, he was lifted into the sky, clear from the devastation. And when he eventually came out of the vision, uh, Tom said he heard a distinct voice say the word Apophis. And at that time, Tom didn't know what Apophis meant. But when he looked into it later, he discovered that there is an asteroid called Apophis that is supposed to come very close to striking the Earth on Friday, April 13th. That's Friday the 13th, 2029, with many people believing that it will actually strike the Earth. Tom was convinced that this was the Wormwood asteroid from Revelation that is set to strike the Earth, and he saw it as occurring halfway through the Tribulation. If true, this would be five years and five days away from the eclipse that's set to occur on April 8th, 2024, this year. And even more interestingly, it would be three and a half years after the beginning of the final jubilee of our age, according to the Dead Sea Scrolls, which begins in 2025 and ends in 2075. Now, if you want more information on this, I did a documentary with Tom Horn and, and other guests called Ragnarok, which you can find at prophecywatchers.com. It's a, it's, a, it's a really good film. It was one of the last things that uh, Tom Horn was involved with. And uh, we really go through his whole vision. Um, and, and by the way, Tom was never this kind of person that always had some vision from the Lord. This was actually only the third time that this had ever happened to him. And the other two times both came true. And uh, we go through all that in the film. I also, I'm also, i also in the film, and I go through all of the Dead Sea Scrolls stuff and the, the year 2025, what that means, what we might be able to expect, um, and how the Essenes looked at our current time that we're living in today. So again, the name of that film is Ragnarok, and you can find that at prophecywatchers.com. Now, just to be clear here, I personally am not saying that the seven-year tribulation will begin next year. There's really no way for us to know that, and I wouldn't be comfortable making a prediction like that unless I heard it directly from God personally, and I haven't. Um, however, I will admit 
there seems to be a lot of strange coincidences occurring on or around 2025 having to do with prophecy and ancient biblical and extra biblical texts. So what do we do with that? Well, the same thing that we should be doing anyway, making sure that we are right with God and looking up for our redemption draws nigh. Uh, now, there's another claim that there will be a planetary alignment during the eclipse on April 8th of this year. And this is not exactly true, but there is something else potentially interesting happening in terms of planetary alignments in the future. Now, again, I've, I've got to stress that we can't look to uh, these things to predict the future. That's called astrology, and it's forbidden by the Bible. So if you're a Christian watching this, that's not something that uh, you want to have any part of. However, we can look at signs in the heavens, you know, generally and wonder if something might occur. I, I just think it's dangerous for us to be really dogmatic or really insistent on what exactly that will be, if anything at all. Uh, if something happens afterwards, then we'll know, and it's always good to be prepared just in case. But I, I don't believe that it's wise to stand firm on an interpretation or prediction uh, before the fact. Now, on April 4th of this year, so this would be four days before the eclipse, there are four planets that will align on the same side of the sun as the Earth. And these will be Venus, Mars, Saturn, and Neptune. Now, full planetary alignments are rare, but three to six planets aligning, like, like it's going to four days before the eclipse, that's a lot more common. Um, in 2024 and 2025, there will be six planetary alignments involving five or more planets. So in 2024, there will be four planetary alignments, but none of them are total. Um, now, we already talked about the one on April 4th. Uh, then on April 20th, there will be five planets aligning. June 7th and August 28th, there will be six. Now, what's interesting, though, is on February 28th of 2025, there's that year again, uh, and on into March 1st, there will be a full planetary alignment, meaning all planets will be on the same side of the sun. Uh, so the other seven planets you'll be able to see in the sky. Now, what's interesting is March 1st of that year of 2025, according to the Dead Sea Scroll calendar, which is the calendar that the Essenes and even the Bible uses rather than the modern Jewish calendar, is Purim. Now, if you're not familiar, Purim is a Jewish holiday that commemorates the escape of the Jewish people from annihilation uh, at the hands of um, Haman, as recorded in the book of Esther. Uh, Purim is celebrated among Jews by exchanging gifts and public celebration, among other things. Now, the interesting thing about Purim is how it is celebrated uh, and I believe that, in my opinion, is likely the day that the two witnesses are killed. Uh, now, when you read the description of that event in Revelation, it says that people are celebrating and giving gifts to one another. And I always thought the giving gifts thing was odd. You know, to these people, the two witnesses were their enemies. And, I, you know, I remember when uh, Osama bin Laden was uh, killed. And yes, America celebrated that, but no one gave gifts to each other over it. However, if this event happens on Purim, then it would make sense why there's gift giving. These people will believe that Israel has been liberated again from their enemies and, and will believe that the Antichrist who kills the two witnesses is actually their Messiah. And if that occurs right on Purim, I mean, that would all fit with the gift giving and the public celebration and everything. But of course, we know what happens next. After three days, God calls the two witnesses up to heaven and there's a giant earthquake that destroys a large portion of the city. Now, I'm not saying that this event will happen in 2025. That's pretty much impossible at this point because it would mean that we're in the tribulation right now. And I don't believe that. But the fact that this planetary alignment occurs on Purim in 2025 is pretty interesting. What does it mean? I don't know. Maybe nothing. Uh, but it's something to keep our eye on at least. Uh, let's talk about cicadas. Um, there's another claim about the occurrence of two breeds of cicadas coming out of the ground at the same time of the eclipse. Now, to be precise, though, these two broods of cicadas are set to erupt in states from Virginia to Illinois from late April through June. So this would be a bit after the eclipse. Uh, the, the last time the two broods, uh, called Brood 19 and Brood 13, emerged simultaneously was back in 1803, making this a once-in-a-lifetime event. 
in my opinion, a very disgusting one. I don't like cicadas at all. I know they're harmless. I just, I, I don't like them. They, they, they're, they're awful looking. They disgust me. Uh, when, when I was a kid, I, I had actually never heard of a cicada when, when I was a little kid. I was probably, I was probably six or seven when this happened. And me and my friends were uh, in the backyard and we were like, um, you know, looking under rocks, looking for bugs and stuff. And, you know, we're, we're, we're just used to the normal bugs like grasshoppers and crickets and things like that. Well, we, we, tip, we moved over this big rock and all of a sudden this ugly, big looking housefly thing uh, came crawling out like and, and it, it terrified all of us because none of us had ever heard of a cicada. We had never seen one before and it was flapping its wings and it was all loud and horrible and I, I just hated everything about it. We all ran away. We all ran to the front yard, freaked out. And uh, from that day forward, I have never liked cicadas. I, I think they're disgusting. Again, I know they're totally harmless, but I don't like them. So I am not looking forward to this event whatsoever. Um, but anyway, so these broods so uh so yeah brood 19 which is also called uh the great southern brood consists of four species of cicadas and emerges every 13 years brood 13 called the north american brood has a 17 year cycle and consists of three species of cicadas so we will be getting a total of seven different species of cicadas all emerging at the same time this year in just a few short weeks um now, some might kind of make a stretch and say, oh, seven. Well, that's all over the book of Revelation. That's got to be prophetic. Well, hang on, uh, because there's other claims going around, too, that I, I, I think are unfounded. But um, it's estimated that we will see numbers of cicadas well into the billions. Ugh. <laughs> and it's also said that this could create an opportunity for genetic crossing between 13-year cicadas and 17-year cicadas that could lead to the emergence of a new brood. Now, some have tried online to find cicadas in the Bible to connect this to something prophetic. Uh, there are, in fact, no mention of uh, cicadas in the Bible whatsoever. So what many have tried to do because of that uh, is to equate locusts with cicadas, claiming that ancient people in biblical times would have called cicadas locusts. However... I can find no justification for this. So the word locus is translated from the Hebrew word uh, arbe or arbi. I'm probably mispronouncing that, but it literally means locust or grasshopper. That's it. Uh, cicadas are a different species altogether. So we don't have a biblical example of cicadas, but we do have something in the Talmud. Now, I'm not encouraging people to read the Talmud as gospel truth or anything like that, but it does show how ancient Jews would have classified these in insects. So the Talmud says, quote, one who traps locusts, cicadas, hornets, or mosquitoes on Shabbos is liable, end quote. So this lends us evidence that ancient Jews had cicadas in a completely different classification uh, as locusts. So apparently to them, as different as a mosquito is to a hornet, that's how different a cicada is to a locust. So given that, I don't believe that we can say that the emergence of these cicada broods has anything to do with prophecy uh, and certainly cannot be linked to locusts as far as I can tell. You know, if God wanted to give us a sign involving locusts, he would have just used locusts. Uh, what would be the point in using cicadas? That that just stands to confuse everybody. Um, now, is it a rare and strange event that we're about to see in the next few weeks? Uh, sure, absolutely. But that doesn't mean that we need to stretch the facts or invent a meaning to try and make it something prophetic. Um, there's enough prophecy happening all around us every day. I totally believe that. We don't need to invent new things. Um Lastly, I want to talk about the National Guard in Oklahoma, which I just moved to. I, I, uh, I now live in Oklahoma, uh, and, uh, and I'm absolutely loving it here. Um, so rumors are going around online about the National Guard being deployed in Oklahoma during the eclipse, and it has a lot of people nervous. Um, it's also claimed that 22 members of an elite chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear unit will be deployed. Um, other warnings are that people should have two weeks worth of food, water, and fuel at hand, and that communication facilities could be overloaded so cell phones may not be operational. And it has people wondering if something nefarious is being planned for the eclipse. The, the truth is, however, a lot more benign than that uh, by all available evidence and information. So this kind of thing actually is not that uncommon. 
Uh, NASA has said that parts of Oklahoma, specifically the city of Idabel, will be among the best spots in America to see the eclipse. Idabel has a population of only 7,000, and they are expecting 100,000 visitors, so more than 10 times uh, what the population is. Now, Lieutenant Colonel, Lee, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Leanne uh, Tumbleson had requested the unit's assistance out of an abundance of uh, caution to handle all the extra people. Tumbleson said, quote, while they're trained in the chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear issues, they can identify and test chemicals or substances to what they are. Most of their day-to-day -day job is helping local law enforcement, like testing mysterious powder like fentanyl. They have a wide range of capabilities. They can do search and rescue. They have a command and control suite, communications. So they're often used anytime there's going to be a large crowd of people. And in this case, because it's such a tiny town and they don't know how to deal with 100,000 people just kind of showing up one day, they've asked local law enforcement, highway patrolman, and our CST team to be part of this mission just to make sure, in an abundance of caution, to make sure everyone, everybody's safe and nothing happens. The CST is just really a very highly trained unit that can respond to various amounts, to various amount of things dealing with large crowds, end quote. So this is not actually unusual at all. The CST participated in 42 multi-agency training events last year and provided support for the Oklahoma City Memorial Marathon, the Oklahoma State Cowboys football game, and the Oklahoma Sooners uh, football game. Uh, so this is not uncommon. The, the Gazette noted that the reason people were advised to stock up is really simple. With so many new visitors showing up in a relatively small town, they're anticipating stores to be hit by a surge in demand. So it's just plain smart to have some extra supplies on hand in case the stores sell out of products. So from what I can tell, especially since this kind of thing has happened before without incident, I, I don't see any reason to be alarmed by the National Guard showing up. I could be wrong, of course, but I'm just not seeing any evidence for concern. Uh, you know, of course, it's always good to be prepared, especially if you live in a small town that's expecting a lot of visitors to see the eclipse on April 8th of uh, this year. At the same time, I don't think it's beneficial to buy into the hysteria and assume something completely horrible is planned against people during the eclipse. Uh, for me, I'd need to see a lot more information, a lot more evidence before I start entertaining an idea like that. It doesn't mean that it's not possible. I'm just saying I don't think it's helpful in this circumstance with the available evidence, which is really thin, it's basically none, uh, to go along with the hype and assist in spreading rumors about some kind of attack. You know, remember, we are to proclaim truth in all things. And we have to be humble enough to admit when, you know, we just don't know something or there's just not enough evidence. Uh, to, to latch on to something like this with such little evidence, I, I don't think is wise. Now, um, before I go, though, I want to remind you that we are accepting donations. And I, I explained this a lot uh, in yesterday's video, so I'm just going to go through it briefly here. But we are accepting donations for both our moving efforts because we are needing to pay a mortgage on the house we just moved from until it sells, plus rent on the new house we live in uh, now. And we moved uh, for work. I accepted a position at Prophecy Watchers, which is just a dream come true. Um, so through this transition period, uh, we, we we're running into a little bit of money trouble, but, but what? So we're 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 asking for uh, donations uh, for that. Um, also, we are accepting donations to help cover our son Nathan's health needs. And again, I talked a lot uh, more about all of that in my video yesterday about NASA and CERN. So if you want more more information on that, you can check it out. Um, and, you know, of course, it's it's never easy admitting it when you need help, especially for a man. And I know a lot of you guys out there, if you're a father and a husband, you know, we're supposed to be the provider. So, But sometimes you run into some rough patches, no fault of your own, and, and you just need to ask for help. And, you know, I learned long ago because uh, I, I had a time in my life where I would just never ask for help. I, would, I just wouldn't do it because I didn't want to burden anybody. And by the way... I hope you all know this is not, I, I'm not trying to burden you here. You don't have to donate. You can pray. Uh, that would be great. Uh, but you're not obligated to give anything if you don't feel that. That's totally fine. Um, but, uh, you know, I learned, I learned early on from a really good friend, you know, if you, if you don't ask for help, if you don't make your needs known, you are depriving people of the opportunity to help you because a lot of people get great joy out of freely giving and freely helping. And you're depriving them of that 
uh, and furthermore, you're depriving them of storing up uh, more riches in in heaven. That you know, more rewards that they'll they'll get in heaven. And thinking of it like that, you know, that that was really an eye opener. And I, I was like, okay, I got I got to put my ego and I got to put my pride aside, and I just need to you know admit when I need when I need some assistance. And I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it for my kids and my uh, my wife anyway. So uh, so that's the situation we're in. Uh, again, you're not obligated at all like um, to help financially but if you feel led and if you want to donate uh, for either you know for whatever the, the the moving situation or our son's uh, our son's health the best place to do that is paypal.me slash Josh Peck disclosure there's a link in the description below and we great we greatly appreciate any help that you can offer uh, and if you can't afford to donate again you can always pray for us and we would really appreciate that as well also if you want full videos like this, most of which you cannot get on YouTube due to censorship, head on over to our website, dailyrenegade.com, and get a membership today. Memberships are only $10 a month or $100 a year, and if you can do it, I suggest getting the $100 a year because it saves you money in the long run. Uh, your membership will go towards the continuation of Daily Renegade plus fund our effort to develop the Daily Renegade app for the phone and TV that will make access, accessing Daily Renegade content even easier for you than it is now. So head on over to dailyrenegade.com and get a membership today. We will see you there. All right. So thank you so much uh, for joining to uh, for joining me today. That is all I have. Until next time, love you all. Take care and God bless.